Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Shades of Grey. <clears throat> Story? It's summer, it's hot, it's our world. But not as we know it. Entire cities lie buried beneath overgrown fields and forests. Technology from another time litters the landscape, and there's evidence of great upheaval. Welcome to Chromat... Chromatatia, where for as long as anyone can remember, has been ruled by color by a colortocracy. From under, from the underground feed pipes that keep the municipal park green, to the healing hues viewed to cure illnesses, to a social hierarchy based on one's limited color perception. Society is dominated by color in this world. You are what you can see. Eddie Russet wants to move up. He has better than average red perception, and he is on a half promise to Constance Oxblood, whose powerful family want the reddest possible son in law to strengthen their hue. But once Eddie and his father relocate to the backwater village of East Carmine, these carefully cultivated plans and expectations are quickly upended. In this town, Eddie must contend with lethal swans, sneaky yellows, inviolable rules, and an enforced marriage to a, the hideous Violet de Moivre. But then he encounters the intriguing Grey named Jane, whose bold defiance of the rules makes him realize that the apparent peace of this world is as much of an illusion as color itself. As Jane opens Eddie's eyes to the cruel regime that lies behind the gaily painted facade, he realizes that understanding the social order is one thing, but questioning it is quite another. Questions are considered unthinkably rude, and rudeness along with bad manners, uncouth language, and inadequately shined shoes, lead one to place permanent relocation or reboot. Eddie must train a very fine line between total conformity, accepting the path, partner, and career de delineated by his hue, and an instinctive curiosity that only gets him in trouble. In a world of enforced simplifications, answers are in short supply, and very every question begets another. What was the something that happened? Why does nobody, no one ever turn from the long-abandoned village of High Saffron? Where did all the spoons go? Huh? Anyway, um, can Eddie... Is there a more important... Is there more important... Is there more to color than just color? Most important, can Eddie ask Jane out for tea and cakes at the Fallen Man before she gets him eaten by carniv by carnivorous tree? And uh, widely known as the ingenious creator of the New York Times best-selling Thursday Next series, Jasper Ford reaches. New creative heights with shades of gray. Utterly original, bizarre, entertaining, and thought-provoking. The world and characters of this new work conform to... Confirm to Ford's place as one of the most brazen, brazen and original literary fantasists of our time. Well, the... Uh, story really isn't all that original when you think about it. I mean... I mean, um, the whole upper-class person falling in love with lower-class person is kind of all over the place, you know, like, whether it be, like, you know, upper-class lady falling in love with lower-class man, like in, uh, you know, um, Titanic, you know, or the other way around with uh, somebody, some dude who is in, like, some upper class family falling in love with some lower class, lower class family, like in, um, 
uh, like Romeo X Juliet, you know, it's nothing really new. I mean, and the <clears throat> the characters really are not that um, interesting as far as I, you know, never I, when I looked at it. Uh, but you know, the premise is interesting. You know, being having a his colortocracy is um, it's a really interesting uh, thing to look at. And the uh, and you know there's some great humor in there that's always a lot of fun, you know. And um, I should also point out that this is actually going to be the uh, yeah first of a trilogy. You know the second one would be a Shades of Grey two painting by numbers, and then Shades of Grey. I mean, Shades of Grey 3, the Gordini Protocols. And, um, over, and overall, there's just, uh, you know, like, you know, like, it's, it just looks like, uh, oh, it was like, I'm, I'm curious on what's going to happen next. And, um, uh, yeah, and, and, um, so, in conclusion, I like to give this a rating of 4 out of 5. Yeah, the characters are not that memorable, and yeah, the um, stories of, like, the, at least during this first installment I've seen many times before. But the premise, the world, the humor is all very good, and uh, it's just a great read. Comfortably recommended. Lots, it's very good, very great, you know, interesting world, you know, can't wait till the next installment. Anyway, um, <clears throat> next time I'm going to be taking a look back to Kevin J. Anderson again, as well as a few very other writers, as well as the third look at the H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds with War, the War of the World Global Dispatch. Until then, see you later. Keep it fruity, y'all.